Going for the yellow jersey is a, is a dream of, of our team, uh, of this group. As long as we can uh, work together, uh, doing uh, as good as possible together, uh, yes, definitely we, we believe that uh, we, can beat, we can beat him. On the start line of the Tour in Copenhagen, there were five previous Grand Tour winners, with 15 titles between them. Chief among them was the man of the moment, Tadej Pogacar, and his biggest rivals would be the duo of Jonas Vingegaard and Primoz Roglic from Team Jumbo Visma. Just by simply doing uh, the best, uh, all of us together, uh, like, uh, like you, you know, we are a strong team, and uh, yes, we have uh, a lot of qualities each individual uh, by itself and uh, yes as long as we can uh, work together uh, doing uh, as good as possible together uh, yes definitely we we believe that uh, we can beat we can beat him of course about wants to go for green and and we all support him in that and 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 primus and i wants to go for yellow and we just have to unite these these goals but for sure primus and i will will, will get the help we need we have a good plan and, and yeah hopefully we can uh, succeed with this Wout van Aert was the favourite for the opening time trial, but the Belgian, Yves Lompart, was the surprise winner, overtaking his compatriot by four seconds and taking the first yellow jersey of the race. But Lompart wasn't the only winner of the day. Tadej Pogacar gained time on all his biggest threats and placed himself at the top of the peloton's hierarchy during the first week. The first week quickly became the Wout van Aert show. Second on stage one, second on stage two, and second again on stage three, he was an ever-present danger to anyone with ambitions of a stage win. Resplendent in his yellow skin suit at the head of the race, Wout van Aert cut a conspicuous figure at the front when he finally won stage four. You've wanted to move on to you've won other huge stages of the, the Tour de France. Would you say that this one is in your top uh, top three? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> it was definitely a tough climb in the end, but these stages uh, are uh, most likely to end in a, in a sprint with at least a bigger group. So uh, I think it's one of the most difficult things to do to uh, get alone. And uh, yeah, could only do it with the like I said before, with the help of my teammates. They, they did half the work and then it was up to me to finish it off. <laughs> Surprised you? A little bit. <laughs> it's good that you dropped your guys also. <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> Orenburg, the hell of the north, the cobbles of northern France. The fifth stage of the tour was the first real test of the race. It might not be a stage where you could win the race, but you could certainly lose it there. Van Aert and his teammate Steven Kreiswijk crashed between cobbled sectors and narrowly avoided a collision with a team car on the chase back. Then, disaster struck for Team Jumbo Visma. Just after sector six, Jonas Vingegaard had a mechanical. He ended up changing his bike three times, and by the time he started chasing, he was more than a minute down on the group of favorites. And after sector five, another crash. Primoz Roglic went down hard, dislocating his shoulder. In a show of pure grit and determination, he simply popped it back into place before continuing on his way. Up the road, Pogacar had attacked with Stuyven and was taking time on all his rivals. Van Aert, who had been called back to help rally his team, 
led Vingegaard to finish 13 seconds down. However, Roglic would lose more than two minutes to his GC rivals. Um, yeah, that was not uh, our day which we wished for. Uh, we had great plans for the day and uh, we were really motivated, well prepared. But at one uh, short moment everything happened uh, or should uh, turn out uh, different and uh, we must went down. And also uh, there was some confusion about the bike change with uh, Jonas, which where he made a bit a, big, a bit of mistake, of course. And uh, yeah, we lost time, but at the end, due to the strong team, uh, I think it was a lot of uh, damage control. Stage seven took the riders to La Superplanche des Belfi, the first big mountain top finish of the 2022 Tour. With a small break up the road. UAE Team Emirates showed they have one of the strongest mountain trains around. George Bennett and Raphael Mica led Tade Bagatcha. Here comes Leonard Kamner heading towards the race finish for the Bora Hansgrohe team. Is it going to be the stage? Is it going to be dreams shattered at the last moment? Geraint Thomas trying to stay with Pogaccia. Vengegaard and Roglic are able to go. Yates is starting to struggle. Pogaccia accelerates hard. Is the stage going to go to Kamna? Are his dreams going to be shattered by a yellow jersey? He's going to go flying past. Kamna is almost at the finish line, just under four hours. Can Leonard Kamna hold on? 150 on meters. Most brutal section of this climb now. Vengegaard attacks. Vengegaard attacks Pogaccia. It's Jonas Vengegaard now as Kamna hauls a weary body in the last oh, 100 metres. Vengegaard goes flying past. Jonas Vengegaard drops Tade Pogaccia. He catches Leonard Kamna. The dreams of the German are shattered. And Vengegaard now desperately trying to get rid of Pogaccia, who's hauling his way back onto the wheel. 50 metres to go. Pogaccia fights. Vengegaard, Pogaccia. Oh. Yellow jersey wins the stage. Pogaccia wins. Vengegaard comes to an absolute standstill. Tade, uh, you seem to really have fun today, but how difficult was it on that gravel when you only just won the stage? Yeah, it was uh, really, really difficult, especially in the end, the last part, when uh, Jonas attack, he was so strong. But uh, yeah, I, say, I said, yeah, my, my boys were working all day. I had to, to push to the finish line. Especially Ushka was at the finish line and my family at the bottom of the climb. It was a really special day. I, uh, we opened foundation today for uh, cancer research, so I wear special shoes just for today. And I'm really, yeah, really happy and proud to, to take, this, uh, take this win on Planche de Buffy. At the second rest day, there were suggestions that Pogaccia should have given up the yellow jersey on stage 9 to spare his UAE team Emirates teammates as much work. He had lost Lainian before stage 8 due to illness, however he wasn't about to give up something he had fought so hard for. In his own words, everybody works really hard for the yellow jersey for the whole year. You never know when you might go home, so it's not the best thing to just give away the jersey. You might never get it back. Another of Pogaccia's key lieutenants, George Bennett, left with Covid, and Raphael Micah was Covid positive but cleared to race. Would that affect his fitness, and how much he could help his team leader defend yellow? we wouldn't have to wait long to find out.